Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mushak, and today we are here with another main association of Madeleine's problem, October 2010, round 2, problem 2. I I'm using the whole space of our Emacs here, just so we have enough space, because this is going to take a lot of typing. So, the absolute value of 4x minus 7 is less than or equal to the absolute value of 5x minus 6. Now, with absolute value equations, we have a negative and a positive. So if this was 4x minus 7 equals 0, then we would have 4x minus 7 equals 0 and 7 minus 4x equals 0. And then we would solve those two equations. With inequalities, we have two absolute value equations, absolute value expressions, first of all. And with inequalities, you first need to solve an inequality to check the case of 4x minus 7 is negative and 4x minus 7 is non negative. So when it's less than or equal to 0, it's negative. When it's greater than or equal to 0, it's non negative. So we just need to solve these two equations before we can go on. Add both sides by 7. Is to divide both sides by 4. Do the same thing with the non negative equation. Okay. Now, do the same thing with 5x minus 6. Now, add both sides by 6, divide both sides by 5. Do the same thing with the non-negative equation. Okay, so now we've just solved four inequalities off the bat, and we kind of have two markers, as I'd like to call them. We have 7 fourths, and we have 6 fifths. And when we move x along these markers, the expressions will change from negative to non-negative. So before we need to go on with anything, we need to figure out if 6 fifths is less than or greater than 7 fourths. So to do that, we need to cross-multiply the denominators. So first multiply by 5 to get rid of the denominator on the left side, and then multiply by 4 to get rid of the denominator on the right side. 24 is less than 35, which means 6 fifths is less than 7 fourths. Okay, so now let's say we start x at negative infinity. So at that point, x is less than or equal to 6 fifths. And at that point, they're both negative. The reason they're both negative is because x is less than 6 fifths, which means 5x minus 6 is negative, and x is le also less than 7 fourths, which means 4x minus 7 is also negative. And then we move x along the number line, and then it crosses 6 fifths. And at that point, it's 6 fifths is less than or equal to x. And, but it's still less than 7 fourths. It's still less than 7 fourths. So at that point, 4x minus 7 is still negative, because x is still less than 7 fourths. So 4x minus 7 is negative. 5x minus 6, however, x is greater than or equal to 6 fifths. So 5x minus 6 is non-negative. And then we keep moving x to the right of the number line, and eventually x becomes greater than or equal to 7 fourths. At that point, they're both non-negative. Because at this point, 5x minus 6 was already non-negative. And 4x minus 7 is non-negative because x is now greater than or equal to 7 fourths. So, those are three cases. And we need to solve inequalities, three different inequalities for each case. So, first, let's, let's just do the first case first, obviously. x is less than 6 fifths means they're both negative. So, the negative 4x minus 7 is 7 minus 4x. Negative of... 5x minus 6, that's 6 minus 5x. We need to add both sides by 4x to get rid of this term. So 7 is less than or equal to 6 minus x. Subtract both sides by 6 to get rid of this. 1 is less than or equal to negative x. Now, we, to get rid of the negative sign on x, we need to divide by negative 1. That means we need to switch the sign from 
less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. So negative 1 is greater than or equal to x. Now we need to switch the signs again because we want x on the left side. So x is less than or equal to negative 1. So this is an e and inequality. And what that means is that six, x is less than 6 fifths and x is less than or equal to negative 1. So to figure, we want to combine this into one inequality instead of having two ands put together. So to figure out that, we first need to figure out if negative 1 is less than or greater than 6 fifths. Negative 1 is negative, but 6 fifths is positive. Negative numbers are always less than positive numbers, so negative 1 is less than 6 fifths. x comes into this because x is less than or equal to negative 1. As you can see, we just have this extra less than 6 fifths on the side, so you can just get rid of that. And that leaves our solution as x is less than or equal to negative 1. So when x is less than or equal to negative 1, this equation is always true. So that's part of our solution. Now let's check the case when 6 fifths is less than or equal to x is less than 7 fourths. Here, 4x minus 7 is negative, so we have 7 minus 4x. 5x minus 6 is non-negative, so we keep that the same. Add both sides by 4x like we did before, and leaving us with 7 is less than equal to 9x minus 6. Add both sides by 6 to get rid of that, and 13 is less than equal to 9x. Divide both sides by 9, 13 ninths is less than equal to x. And now switch the sides because we want x on the left side, so x is greater than or equal to 13 ninths. So now, what is... So now we have two and equations that we want to combine again. So, wait. One second. Okay, we're back. I'm sorry, this is such a long video that I was bound to get interrupted by something. So, now, we need to figure out when 13 ninths fits into this 6 fifths is less than equal to x is less than 7 fourths inequality. To do that, we need to compare 13 ninths to 6 fifths, and 13 ninths to 7 fourths. So, we just cross multiply like we did when we compared 6 fifths and 7 fourths. So, multiply each side by 5, 65 ninths, and 6. Multiply each side by 9, 65, 54. 65 is greater than 54, so 13 ninths is greater than 6 fifths. And multiply each side by 4, 52, multiply each side by 9, 52, 63. 52 is less than 63, so 13 ninths is less than 7 fourths. Okay, so, and 13 ninths is also greater than 6 fifths, so we have that. Okay, so where does x fit into this? Well, 6 fifths is less than 6, 13 ninths is less than or equal to x is less than 7 fourths. So now we've combined 13 ninths into this, but you have this extra 6 fifths less than on the side, so we can just get rid of that. Which leaves us with 13 ninths is less than or equal to x is less than 7 fourths. So that's part of our solution. When 13 ninths is less than or equal to x is less than 7 fourths, this equation is always true. Okay. So now, last case, x is greater than or equal to 7 fourths. So, they're both non-negative, so we just keep everything the same. Yay! Okay, so now subtract by 4x to get rid of this. Um, and add by 6 to get rid of this. Now, we divide by negative 1 again, which we, we makes us switch the sign. No, we don't divide by negative 1. We switch sides, which means we need to switch the sign that way. So, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. We did that to get x on the left side again. So, x is greater than or equal to 7 fourths, and x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, negative 1 is less than 7 fourths, because negative 1 is negative and 7 fourths is positive, and negative numbers are always less than positive numbers. So we have negative 1 is less than 7 fourths. And now we need to fix x into this. So x is greater than or equal to 7 fourths. So it goes on this side. Now we have this extra negative 1 is less than on this side. So we can just get rid of that. And we have 
7 fourths is less than equal to x. You'll see why I'm keeping x on the right side this time in just a second. So when 7 fourths is less than equal to x, 4x minus 7, this equation is always true. So, and these are all parts of our solution. So instead of these being ands, we combine them with ors. So that means if any one of them are true, then this equation is solved. So it's an or instead of an and. Now here we need to look at this. 13 ninths is less than or equal to x is less than 7 fourths, or 7 fourths is less than or equal to x. Here we have x is less than 7 fourths, and 7 fourths is less than or equal to x. So, x is less than 7 fourths, and 7 fourths is less than or equal to x, or kind of negations of each other. Either x is less than 7 fourths, or x is greater than or equal to 7 fourths. So, because that's always true, and this is an or, and not an and, when something is always true, we get rid of it. And I'm sorry if I didn't explain that well. Basically, this is our solution. We can just get rid of 7 fourths entirely. And the reason we can do that is because, let's say we're moving along the number line and seeing our solution, okay? So we start at negative infinity and we keep going, we keep going. All of this is true because it's less than equal to negative 1. And then we hit negative 1. So that's not part, negative 1 is part of our solution. But anything greater than negative 1 on is not part of a solution. So now we keep going, not part of our solution, not part of our solution, not part of our solution. And then we hit 13 ninths. Once we hit 13 ninths, we're in our solution again, because 13 ninths is less than equal to x. So we keep going, we keep going, we keep going, we hit 7 fourths. And then once we hit 7 fourths, we automatically go from solution to solution, because x is less than 7 fourths, that's when we're supposed to get out of a solution, but then we get going into 7 fourths is less than or equal to x, so we go into our solution. So there's no no solution between these two expressions. And then as we go on to infinity, we keep, keep being part of a solution because 7 fourths is less than or equal to x. Because there's no solution, there's not a gap between 7 fourths and 7 fourths, since they're the same number, we can just get rid of them from our solution. So that leaves us with this solution. Now, I want to switch this just so these, the x is on the left side again. And that's our answer. After a very long video, that is our answer. x is less than or equal to negative 1, or x is greater than or equal to 13 ninths. Those are the only cases when the absolute value of 4x minus 7 is less than or equal to the absolute value of 5x minus 6. Now, it, this looked like a very short problem, literally. If we go down here, that solve. Absolute va that equation. Just solve. So, it uh, looks like a very short problem. But it's actually a very long problem. I hope you had fun doing this problem. Probably the hardest problem yet. I had to record this three times. And I got interrupted. So, yeah. Have fun doing math. And I hope you like that problem.